Uh, now, the United Rugby Championship is uh, almost upon us with the first round of matches taking place this weekend. In studio today, we have uh, two of the Lions players joining us on the Big Brunch. Uh, very good morning to uh, Travis Gordon and Sanele Nohamba. Good morning, guys. Welcome to 919. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. It is uh, great to have you guys here. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, Travis, you're a loose forward and uh, Sanele is a scrum up. But they say that you can play anywhere. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, welcome to the show. It's, it's absolutely awesome to have you guys here. We're going to have some fun with you a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, let's let's talk rugby. Uh, Charles, you you broke through uh, uh, through the Lions Curry Cup uh, squad uh, two years ago. Uh, but share with us your journey. Take us through uh, who Travis is. Where were you born? You know, where did you grow up? And uh, how did you get into this rugby thing? So, I've um, been born and raised in Joburg my whole life. I uh, grew up in the south of Joburg. I mm. um, actually picked up a rugby ball when I was under six. Wow. Uh, first ever training session, I'll never forget it. Got run over by a big boy. <laughs> Started crying. <laughs> and my dad was like, listen, remember, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Mm. And um, ever since then, it's kind of uh, the bug bit me. Um, then I've come through the, the, like the Lions ranks from schoolboy from yeah. the 12, under 13, playing under 16. Then to the Craven Week side, and then mm. um, yeah, through the junior systems. Um, was fortunate to break through last year. I uh, struggled a little bit with injury, but yeah. um, body's feeling great now. Really, really um, building on it. So hopefully this season can play a lot more. And uh, we'll get to you just now, Samele, but where was a moment while growing up did you realize, you know what, I'm good at this rugby thing. Yeah, it could be a career for me. It was probably under 16. I um, was busy doing every sport, you know, yeah. every turn is a new sport to focus on that. Yeah. And uh, I made under 16 Grand Combo side, um, captain side, and we won it that year. And all of a sudden, I was like, hang on, there might actually be a future yeah. in this um, in this sport. Um, so, yeah, like under 16 was definitely a year where you know the name kind of gets separated, like the guys who've got a future mm. and the guys who've Parents think they're going to be split box no longer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was there in the 16 year after that uh, one kind of year. Cool. Uh, so, Nene, what about you? I mean, uh, we know that you were uh, born in Eastern Cape, am I right? Yeah. Tell us, take us through your upbringing and, and how you managed to get into rugby. Um, I got into rugby a little bit later, um, like um, around like 16, 17. Mm-hmm. I think that's when I fell in love with the sport. But, Born and raised um, in the Eastern Cape in a small town called Dallas. Um, had lots of cricket. Uh, mm. Went to Dale, um, Dale Junior. Played cricket there and we love the rugby. Uh, got an opportunity to go to Dale High School. Um, played a bit of both and then yeah, things changed uh, around 16, 17 where I decided to just quit cricket and just, I don't know, go with the budget for rugby. Yeah. And, yeah, it was, it was worked out, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I got asked, like, obviously, uh, rugby is a good plan. But, have, like, have you guys ever thought about a backup plan? Like, what else do you fall back on? So, um, I actually also do financial advisory mm. on, uh, on the side, which cool. is um, when you go through one or two injuries, you realize that rugby is a short career, like you could say. Yeah. So, I started financial advisory. I'm also doing a digital marketing company nice. with my partner. So we're trying to build that up now, but um, like you said, you will get a backup plan. Yeah, it's a short thing. Yeah, so then are you? Um, it's a Travis. Sorry, bro. There's a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. It's yeah. um, something I've thought about, um, yeah. trying to figure it out. You know, um, it's a little bit hard for me not knowing what, what you actually do yeah. like outside the game, but doing a couple of things to figure that out. Okay. Yeah, 100%, something that goes back in my mind. Yeah, cool. Well, the thing, good thing is that you uh, are still young. Uh, well, you might not think so, <laughs> but trust me, you, I mean, you're still young. Uh, let's delve into, into the Rugby World Cup. I mean, I'm sure, obviously, you guys have been following it. Uh, any of the weekend results surprise you? Because obviously going into this last weekend that we went, like, pundits the world over were saying, Northern Hemisphere domination. They were like, I think even the referees, I think Wayne Barnes on Twitter also uh, came out and said that it was going to be a Northern Hemisphere sweep. 
Lots of them got it wrong. <laughs> All of them got it wrong, in fact. Uh, did, did those results surprise you? New Zealand and, and Ireland first? I think um, for me personally, there's no result on it besides uh, the New Zealand and um, Ireland game. Yeah. Um, the, the way that the Irish have been riding in the last couple of weeks, I think it was, mm. that was amazing. So I thought they were going over New Zealand, but I think that's the only uh, result that just. Yeah, yeah, and, and what about our game in France? I mean, that was a thriller for match, right? Yeah, it was a hell of a game. It was, um, I think, as a South African, we never thought we were underdogs. We were definitely underdogs going into that game. Like the French side, they're a hell of a talented team. It's a great bunch of guys who've gone through the age groups. I think we played against most of those guys at the schools, um, definitely you, like, you know, in the 20s. So, the performances, and they were crucial performances, but crucial players for the box, which definitely mm. got us over the line. So, um, yeah, it was it was that nail bite in the edge of your seat. You know, the game only yeah. finishes at eleven. Now you got to go try to get to bed. And then everyone's heart pounding. I'm sure every South African felt exactly. Back. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but after after that match, uh, Antoine Dupont came out and uh, criticised uh, Ben O'Keefe, the referee, saying that he wasn't up to standard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I know I'm, as players, like you, you got to be careful to to tread that line. Uh, with criticizing referees because you know you get in a lot of trouble. Uh, do you think there's any warrant for him there? Um, but just for me personally, watching the World Cup, I just watch as a yeah. total fan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just, I'm just a fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, I think as South Africans, we always will think he's great, and as the French, you probably will think he's terrible. <laughs> um, but vice versa, yeah. he left us against the Irish. South African, South Africans yeah. were complaining, but I think you know we're all, all human. And um, every rugby game, you can go and criticize for both sides. Probably about a hundred yeah. incidents where the ref has got it wrong to the law. So we are human and. No one's out there trying to blow one way or the other way. I mean, some calls go in your favor, some calls don't, but that's all. It's just the nature of the game, I, I suppose, because, I mean, they, uh, he gave uh, uh, even a, a yellow for that uh, head contact, which was kind of accidental if you really look at it, but there were a few other instances that uh, the French players, but nobody looked at it, not even the team more. So, as you said, right, so uh, it happens. So, what about this weekend? Do you think we have enough to overturn England? Yes. I do. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think just physically um, we should be able to outpower them. Uh, if you look at the England side, like man to man, they're really really good players. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I think we do have one mentally over them over the last couple of times we have played them. And I think the boxer will take massive momentum out of the French game, even the French at home. So I think we should take it. It's just named the, the exact same team uh, that ran out against France. Do you think there's any risk there? Maybe we've tired bodies. No, not at all. I think they have enough time to recover. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that team that played um, 1-2-3 was, was, was incredible. So, um, can we do it? Back to back World Cups? Yeah, can we? Chance, yes. Yes. All right, nice. Uh, talking about uh, titles, uh, the Lions, you guys narrowly missed out on uh, playoff qualification last uh, season in the URC. But it was massive improvement on, on the inaugural season when, when we ended up 12. Uh, there have been uh, some outgoings as well in the squad, some incomings as well. Uh, what's the realistic uh, finish that you guys are aiming for this season? Um, I just think um, as a squad, we are process driven, you know, we're not um, outcome based. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just taking it game by game, we okay. have the set goals obviously, but um, we're not looking forward to uh, whatever the back end of the competition we've got the stormers uh, this weekend, and that's what's important. So, uh, the next game, the next game, and mm. just trying to not stay process driven rather than out yeah, no, it's a great way to go. Uh, there were times last season when you guys were playing scintillating rugby, really. Uh, it was more a case of consistency that uh, got you guys uh, in the end being the issue. Can Lions fans accept, uh, expect more this year, this time around? Yeah, 100%. I think um, I said it to everyone who almost listened to me this preseason. We are probably in the best place we've been in the last couple of years um, as a squad. Mm -hmm. But the same squad now with majority of the same guys staying for the last two, three years. So the chemistry is there. Um, we've had some great additions, like you say. Um, so it's been really, really good for us as a squad. I think the mm -hmm. squad's in a great place. There's great camaraderie. And we've also got depth now. So I think mm -hmm. we, um, the inconsistencies of the past seasons won't really be as um, exaggerated as it's been.
So then how's the change been from uh, coming from the coast to the altitude? Yeah, definitely. Altitude was 100 last year. Yeah. But yeah, we just about, you know, a lot of the guys uh, are welcoming me um, to today, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really good, you know, enjoying every moment, it has been great. Yeah. Now you're kicking off against the Stormers, there's no easy game in this competition, absolutely not. Uh, I think it gets ramped up even worse when it's uh, local derbies. Uh, what are you expecting from the guys from the Cape? Um, yeah, um, what a team to, to, to test yourself in the first game, you know, back to back, uh, mm. finals, uh, great team, and then, uh, then, uh, then up and up, um, but yeah, South African derbies, if there's one thing you can't miss out, is, <laughs> yeah. is how brutal it gets, um, yeah. how physical it gets, and yeah, I think that would be probably the point of purpose. Yeah, no, for sure, and uh, any game plan, obviously you can't give away secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Province being a, like another X factor, a lot of great counter attacking. So for us, you know, it's going to have to be about neutralizing their threats. We, we know what they are, mm. so we're going to have to start there, sit down processes, and that should hopefully see us across the line.